Hello everyone, Mr. Merkid here and today is part 20 of the Skype tool series. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a remote sort of control for the tool. So what this does is if it's looking for a file which you can change the numbers of from your PC and it will check for this file if something contains it. If, if it contains something then the tool is going to do something in return. Kind of confusing but it's really simple when I explain it. Uh, so let's get started with this. Uh, if you remember last time we added uh, an isauth function so if I quickly go to that because to save us a bit of time we just want to copy this top half of it uh, we just want to copy the part where it's downloading and reading the file for us we don't care about the rest um, so we want to create a new function here public sub and we can just call this remote shutdown and paste our code in there like that uh, except we don't want to be using this Dropbox link. We want to create a new one. So in Dropbox, we want to create a new file, and I'll call this Remote Shutdown, um, like that. And inside here, I'll just put a zero, save it, and close it. We just want a zero in there, and I'll copy the link, and I'll come in and paste it in here. And remember to change the zero to a one. Uh, we don't. We want to download the file. We want to just read it. And because we copied this, we want to make it relevant, uh, and we'll call this remote command instead. Like that. Um, so that should be reading our file, checking the number. So we just want a simple if statement saying um, if uh, remote command dot contains inside here, we just want to if it contains a zero then we don't want it to do nothing. Zero is default so we do nothing um, but else if remote command dot contains if it contains a one we want to do something now uh, what we want to do is shut down the tool. Uh, after that we want to say else if remote command dot contains let's say we got a 2 in the file now then we'll let's say we'll lock the tabs lock tabs uh, you can go on and on so I've just, I'm have just i going to show you two examples here we don't want to do nothing here uh, 0 is default for shutdown we just want to type application dot exit like that and to lock the tabs we only have one tab control so tab control 1 dot enabled oops dot enabled is equal to false so we want to call this actually because if we don't call it it's not going to do anything so we go to our form load just underneath our is auth function or actually we can do it before the is auth function we can say remote shutdown like that so it will check we have zero in our file so everything should open fine um, actually I'm going to remove this login page as well I don't like it so as you can see the tools opened correctly we are off everything's fine we can use the tool fine because zero is in the file if we close that I just quickly want to remove that login page like that should be done if we come to our Dropbox file and we change this number now to a 1 save that if we were to launch the tool up now the tool should shut down because that's what we made it do successfully connected but the tool shut you see the tool doesn't open anymore we'll open it again uh, it says sex successfully connected because we have that check first you just sort of want to remove that but you can see the tool is not not open at all uh, if we change this number one to a two now the tabs should lock so we can open it successfully connected ok tool should open at least you are off ok yep the tools open but now I'm clicking on these tabs everything's locked I can't use the tool uh, so yeah everything's locked nothing can be used um, same goes for, for if I quickly go back to the 
bottom to the function. Let's say we had else if remote component.contains. Let's say we had a free in here this time. And what we could do, we could say button one dot enabled is equal to false. I don't know what button one is, but you could have a specific button, so let's say the connect button. You didn't want anyone to connect, if you used to have a button anyway, uh, you don't want anyone to connect to the tool, so you can just disable this button by having number three in a file. So no one can click that button now, it's disabled. So essentially it's it's a really simple way, but just by changing this number from your PC, you can shut down the tool if you don't want no one to use let, let's say your tool gets spread around or leaked. Um, you don't you don't agree with this, so you just change this number to a one, no one can open it now. Unless obviously someone cracked it or something, I'm not sure. But either way, it's a good piece of code to have in there as a precaution if something does happen. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really it. It's really simple, but some people don't think of this idea, and it can help you out massively actually if something goes wrong. Uh, yeah, so that's it really. Uh, just before this video ends, I just want to say because I've seen it a, a lot lately uh, if you're making a Skype tool following these videos then actually try to design it yourself I've seen people selling things and releasing tools that just look like the tutorials which is kinda pointless because then you have a tool that looks like someone else's tool wouldn't you want something unique to you uh, I don't know why you're selling something that other people have made themselves already you could at least try to design it yourself or something like that I made the tutorials to help you and give you a bit of knowledge on how to create the coding and make everything work I'd, and people have been copying it exactly like it looks exactly like the tutorial um, I didn't really want for that to happen so if you could change that at least then it's all good and also if you can give some credits or something that's even better but I just wanted to say that because I'm seeing it a lot and I don't really agree with it but thank you for watching the videos anyway uh, if you did like it please leave a like and a comment and I will see you next time